And it was a stormy day across South Florida this afternoon. That's the top of our weather headlines tonight. Big time inland thunderstorms, including a severe thunderstorm in Okeechobee County and a report of a funnel cloud in western areas of Broward County this afternoon. I'm Greg Padgett live in Palm Beach Gardens. You may have a hurricane supply kit like this one right here, but do you know what item in here doesn't belong, potentially dangerous and deadly? Even though you can find it on local store shelves, I'm going to tell you why you should never use this product before, during, or after a storm. Hi, Tom and Kristen. We're not going to worry about it yet, but we will be watching it very closely as we head into the end of the weekend. In the meantime, folks who live down in parts of the Windward Islands will have to watch this very closely because it will probably be impacting them in the next 48 hours. Today, the CEO of Publix contacted us after hearing about the report in August on the dangers of emergency candles. The company says that they will now make some changes based on our recommendations in the interest of public safety. Storm Center 25 forecast with Greg Padgett. Well, we certainly had a gorgeous Labor Day weekend. Yeah, it was Could really not nice. Complain. Nice last couple of days. And then tonight as the Labor Day holiday is ending, we're seeing some showers. So it's only fitting that the rain holds off until late in the day on Monday. And we need the rain. It's been kind of dry over most areas for the last couple of weeks. Let's check out those temperatures first across South Florida. Then we'll check up on your live pinpoint Doppler radar. Temperatures right now in the low range of the 80s across the region. 81 in uh, Vero Beach. It's 76 in West Palm with some of those showers around. Quite mild though, down to 84 degrees right now in Miami. Here's a look at regional Doppler first and see these showers in the last six hours moving on shore with a southeasterly flow here and there's still some more rain offshore. So we're going to pick up some rain overnight. Let's take a look at light pinpoint Doppler radar and there's some shower activity right now south of West Palm Beach and just to the northeast of downtown West Palm. You notice though nice and dry up on the Treasure Coast and I probably think that that will continue as we head into the evening hours. So we take a look at the entire state of Florida today and this evening we see those showers offshore and they're going to continue to slowly migrate on shore throughout the overnight and early morning hours even possibility so as you head out to the bus stop with the kids tomorrow maybe even the umbrella may be needed some storms over parts of Daytona Beach dry now over North Florida where they've had some heavier showers and storms today associated with this trough of low pressure here also some big storms over parts of the Great Lakes tonight ushering in some cooler air which is going to reinforce the nice cool air they've had in place here the last few days and we're watching some storms now taper off over areas of Texas. Look at these temperatures into the upper plains, only into the 60s tonight. They were into the 90s the last few days. And temperatures right now into the northeast or into the 50s and low range of the 60s. They've had a very, very nice last couple of days. Overnight lows have been into the 30s and the 40s. We'll see also temperatures out in the 70s and 80s out west, very mild, and that's going to continue for them in the Rocky Mountain states. Okay, the latest in Tropical Storm Erin, winds are at 45 miles per hour. We have seen a flare-up of showers and thunderstorms tonight. You see this big, bright area of convection here. That may be just temporary, according to the National Hurricane Center. We'll watch it and see. It's also moving off. It looks like more to the northwest here, but we'll watch it the next few days. There is a big area of high pressure to the north of this system, helping to push it off towards the west-northwest. It is still only a tropical storm, so that means this is the second latest in the last 60 years that we've gone without having a hurricane in the Atlantic season. The latest actually in the last 60 years was 1984 with Hurricane Diana and that was on September 10th. That's a week from today. So if our trend continues, we may actually break that record. Here's your forecast for tomorrow. We're going to see some of those morning coastal showers across the area, and then some inland thunderstorms, high temperatures from the upper 80s to low range of the 90s, and our winds southeast at 10. That trend's going to continue for us also for the next couple of days. For tonight, again, coastal showers in the southern areas, low temperatures in the upper range of the 70s, and our winds southeast at 10. For tomorrow, maybe a few more coastal morning showers, afternoon inland thunderstorms, and high temperatures near 90. Your boating forecast for tomorrow sees two feet, inland water smooth, high tide at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we take you through the next five days as we all head back to work on Tuesday. High temperatures near 90 and overnight lows into the mid to upper range of the 70s. We will have a better chance, I believe, for some showers and thunderstorms as we head throughout the next couple of days. We'll also keep you posted on Tropical Storm Aaron. Not expect to become a hurricane anytime soon. Sunny 104.3, you get the forecast if there is a lot of rain around in the morning as you head out to work. It's okay if it comes tomorrow as long as it wasn't here this weekend. That is true. What a beautiful weekend. It's gorgeous. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome, Greg. Hi, Tom and Krista. We're not going to worry about it yet, but we will be watching it very closely as we head to the end of the weekend. In the meantime, folks who live down in parts of the Windward Islands will have to watch this very closely because it will probably be impacting them in the next 48 hours. Let's give you a better perspective of this system. We put it into motion, and again, it's the one right in the center part of the Atlantic. It is still a tropical depression. 
depression tonight, but it is getting better organized. You can see it's almost moving out of this frame here because it has moved quite rapidly throughout the day today off to the west at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. But we're seeing showers and thunderstorms now developing around most of the semicircle of this particular storm system. Here are the latest coordinates as of 11 p.m. from the National Hurricane Center, 12.6 degrees north, 50.2 degrees west. It's about 625 miles to the east of Barbados. Winds are still at 35 miles per hour, but look at that moving off to the west at 26 miles per hour. That would put it somewhere near Barbados in about 30 hours. Stay with us. We're going to let you know where some of those tropical storm watches which have been posted in the last hour are for which islands and also how this may impact us way down the road. All that coming up in a few minutes. Despite the warnings by the Red Cross, some stores in our area continue to stock emergency candles. Once again, let's join Greg Patchett, who is live at a Publix. Greg, are any of these stores about to make any changes? Well, actually, they are, Mike. You know, you can find candles in any retail store in South Florida, but we specifically have been looking for those candles which say emergency on them, which gives the impression it's okay to use these after a hurricane. But emergency managers say they are just too dangerous. And now, because of our report, we've actually convinced at least two companies to make some significant changes. The message against using candles came after Hurricane Hugo more than 10 years ago. The director of the National Hurricane Center at the time, Dr. Bob Sheets, documented several candle-related fires as a result of that Category 3 storm. Eight-year-old Amanda Blake was one of those who died up there in, uh, in the South Carolina area. And she was in the house, and they had a candle, and the window, uh, wind came in, blew the candle over, catch the curtain on fire, and she died in there. But despite those documented cases, you can still find emergency candles in stores today. We found them in Publix, Winn-Dixie, and Walmart. In this Palm Beach Gardens Publix, we found weather alert radios, packs of batteries, and emergency candles in a hurricane supply display. I think if people are not up to date and what is the right preparedness, right disaster preparedness to, to take on, uh, there's a tendency to see this on the shelf and pick it up and throw it in the cart. We asked management why they would stock candles with hurricane supplies, considering all the warnings against using them after a storm. A few days after our inquiry, we went back into that store and found the candles removed from the hurricane display, but stocked in another aisle. We contacted the company's corporate office asking why they promote a product to be used for supplies when others say it's unsafe. A public spokesperson responded by saying we offer candles, batteries, and flashlights to our customers as a choice. There have not been any recalls on the candles, so we have no plans to pull the product. When the merchant puts that out there and says, here's your emergency supply of light, in this case, uh, candles, uh, that sends a wrong message, and I would strongly recommend that they get that out. Let's get back to doing things that are safe. In Winn-Dixie, we found the American Greetings brand of emergency candles. A company spokesperson says they were unaware of the increased risk of fires until we contacted them, but they have now agreed to make some changes. After your conversation with us earlier, we contacted our candle supplier and they've agreed to change the label on the candles that we presently stock uh, from emergency candles to utility candles. Uh, also, uh, we will not include candles in any displays for hurricane preparedness. And in Walmart, we found a box of four glass candles manufactured by the Continental Candle Company. On the box, in large blue letters, it reads hurricanes, tornadoes, power outages. The company responded by saying Walmart is taking immediate action to work with the merchandiser of this product to change the packaging in accordance of the suggestions of the American Red Cross. Now, the candles we found, like these two here, range from a couple of dollars from the one you could buy at Publix to this one at Walmart, which has four candles on the inside, costs about $5. But coming up in a few minutes, we're going to show you some of the alternative lighting sources that are out on the market today. Very, very inexpensive, maybe a few more dollars, but it's definitely worth the investment, according to emergency managers, when you consider that it might actually save your life. We're reporting for you live tonight in Palm Beach Gardens for Hurricane 2001. Mike, back to you.